Is taxation theft? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, I suppose looked at in a certain light it could be because if you've uh, ever been presented with a hefty tax bill that you decline to pay, well, you know what happens next and uh, it's usually not very nice. Effectively, you don't have the option of not paying your taxes, so it looks like it's theft. But the thing is, it only looks like, a th like theft in a, in a vacuum because ultimately, um, your property is yours because everyone else says it is. There's no other, no other, in no other way is your property, which the government is dipping into in the form of taxes, in no other way except for you as part of society um, do you actually own your property. Your house doesn't know that you own it. It doesn't, you don't own it in any absolute sense, or your car, or uh, anything. Property is, is a concept that is held in common by societies. It's dependent upon the society that you live in. It's a collective right. The idea that uh, you actually own something. You only own it because everybody else agrees that you own it. And that's the first link between the individual and the government because the government are, uh, is the group that legitimately leads society. Now you might not think that it's legitimate but <clears throat> it is accepted even grudgingly as legitimate simply because what it does people don't want anyone else doing. The government runs courts that decide who owns what. That's actually most of what the courts actually do in spite of what one sees in all these murder mysteries. It's generally who owns what. You have a dispute with someone else about over a bit of property. Well, you can solve it by having a blood feud, I suppose, but we've decided that that's really not the best way to go. Um, but the normal way is you take them to court. There's the government. Courts cost money. You have to pay police. You have to pay lawyers who uh, investigate and who uh, decide on these sorts of things. Um, now, you could do this privately, I suppose, but again, where does legitimacy comes from? come from? You hire an arbitrator to decide between the two of you who owns something, and then suddenly you, you get a judgment that you don't like, and you say, well, no, no, I, I, I'm not going to pay any attention to this arbitrator because uh, I don't like his decision. Okay, you're back to the law of the jungle, or you're back in the government court. There's no other place to go. Um, <clears throat> so you're, you're actually using the government whether you realize it or not. Um, and again, it depends on what you actually see the government to be. Uh, I see the government as the legitimate leaders of society, and I don't mean legitimate in terms of they're the good, the, the, the right people who are up there. They are the ones, again, that we accept to be uh, making these sorts of decisions and having this kind of power for fear of anyone else having that kind of power. It's not because the, the government are nice people. They're usually a bunch of crooks. Um, I've always said that uh, the very fact that someone wants to get elected and get into government should in a perfect world automatically disqualify them from being in government, but we don't live in a perfect world. Um, now if you sort of take this this entire thing writ large, <clears throat> let's say um, that you're willing to live with the consequences of a sort of a law of the jungle uh, kind of uh, view of property. In other words, you don't actually own anything in terms of rights, because rights are a social thing which are enforced only by the other members of society. You just own your stuff because you can protect it, because you personally can enforce your ownership of it. You don't need the cops or the courts. You've decided that you know, you're going to use your own resources, your own wherewithal, to um, protect your own property and to enforce your um, use of it, your exclusive use of it. Okay, <clears throat> because that's really, you know, that's the, uh, the, the alternative. Okay, well, let's take that issue writ large. Um, you live in the United States of America. Who says that it's the United States of America that you live in? What if the Chinese say, "Well, I dispute that. Um, I dispute that government. Uh, I, I say that that government that is running the United States is not legitimate. They don't speak for the, the the people of the United States. In fact, I don't even think that the United States even exists as a country. Personally, it's just a bunch of people living on a piece of land." which is kind of the way the, the guy who wants to arm himself and protect himself and, and, and his property through his own resources thinks. He's saying, I don't, I don't recognize anything larger than myself. 
So then, uh, like I say, the foreigner says, okay, well, that's, that's wonderful because uh, I don't recognize the U.S. government. I don't recognize the legitimacy of the U.S. courts. I don't recognize the legitimacy of the U.S. borders. So I'm just going to go in there and say that now this belongs to China. Well, of course, the big firewall preventing that from happening is the U.S. military. And uh, let's just see how far we get with a military that's financed privately. Um, <clears throat> we had that before in a number of cases. In the old days, the uh, British armed forces were generally uh, um, financed more or less privately. And, of course, uh, the type of government that they had was a merchant or a landed oligarchy. Nobody else had the right to vote. Nobody else had the right to interfere in politics. Why should they? Uh, why should anyone else tell me how I'm spending my own money? Because that's ultimately what the government does. It decides how it spends the public's money. I'm the one that's uh, that's paying for the military, I being the, the uh, industrialist or the landed... Uh, 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 landed aristocrat who makes a lot of money off the, the, his vast estates, <clears throat> therefore I decide how all the money is spent. Nobody else does. So that's another alternative to, uh, to the way that things are done now. So okay, you can, you can abolish everything and then the Chinese run in. You can say, I don't want to pay taxes, and, but anyone else who wants to contribute towards the, the public good is free to do so. Um, even though I'm going to avail, I'm going to be protected by those things that uh, taxation uh, brings about, um, i.e., a military. And again, that U.S. military is a firewall so absolute that it's, it's. I think that it's so big that people in North America tend to just ignore it. Um, it overwhelms the imagination, the the the, the size and might of the U.S. military. <clears throat> I'm a Canadian, and I'm as as sure. Uh, uh, a, uh, a beneficiary of that massive firewall as any American is. But ultimately it's there and it's protecting me. And <clears throat> if I don't want to contribute towards that, um, then in a sense I'm getting something for nothing, which is, in a sense, theft. What's the difference? You tell me. The government taking from you might be theft, but you getting things from taxation or from other people's resources, you getting benefit from it, is also theft. As long as we've got society, as long as we live in a, in a collective entity called society, and just let's just see what happens when we decide to abolish society, we're going to have something like the public good. The public good requires resources to operate. Those resources are met in the form of taxation. I have yet to come up with a better idea than taxation for the things that have to be done for the public good. We live in an imperfect world. Thank you.